video, we're going to learn about the concept of a subspace of a vector space. So the, the basic idea is that you have these vector spaces and they're all, you know, kind of very standard things. But what if you have like a special like niche example, something that shouldn't be the whole vector space, but still has similar properties. And that's what's going to be called a subspace. So the official definition is a subset W is a subspace if that subset satisfies the same vector space properties that the whole vector space does. So all those nice 10 properties, if your subset also satisfies them, then you are guaranteed to have a subspace. Well, that's great and all, but it would be a gigantic pain if we had to check all 10 of those properties again for subspaces, and we don't want to do that. So it turns out there is a nice little shortcut called the subspace test. And what it tells us is that there's really just three things we need to worry about. <clears throat> the first is that our subset has to be non-empty, so it has to be at least one vector in there. You can't have an empty set be a subspace. That right there is, is almost never going to be an issue because the things that we're interested in they do in fact have vectors in them, so it's going to be there. Uh, however, the other two are a little bit more of an issue. They need to be closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. And you may or may not remember what closed means. Closed means is that if you take two vectors that are in your subset and you add them, it's still going to be in your subset. And if you take two vectors, sorry, a vector in your subset and any number and you multiply them, you should still be in your subset. Uh, for example, uh, positive numbers would not make a subspace because if you take a positive number and multiply by a negative one, let's say, it would not be in the positive number set anymore. Therefore, that set is not closed under scalar multiplication. Now, we're going to usually be more interested in examples of subspaces of cooler vector spaces than just R. And so if we look here at, say, a vector space R2, and we take all the points that are satisfying y equal to x plus 1, so really that just means we have a line here, and then we want to determine now whether or not this set all the points on that line whether they are going to be a subspace or not and so we know that for subspaces it has to satisfy the again the two conditions that's closed in addition and scalar multiplication and why don't we just try here let's let's take some points on here so one point i know is the y-intercept zero one and another point I know is the point, say, 5, 6. Right? You plug in x is 5, you're going to get a y is 6 there. And let's see what happens when I add these together. I'm going to get the point 5, 7. But 5, 7 here, that is not on my line. So this 5, 7 is not in, in case you haven't seen this notation before, this means is not in the set W that I started with. And if it's not in W, then that means that you took two things that were in W, added them, the result is no longer in W, therefore it is not closed under vector addition, and therefore it cannot possibly be a subspace. So in this case here, not subspace. Okay, so if that's not a subspace, then let's look at the next one here. The next one, again, my overall vector space is R2, and my W is a line again. This time it's Y equal to 3X. You could try, say, you know, take two points here, 0, 0, and 5, 5, and you could add them up here and see what happens. Well, that answer is in W. But here's the problem. It's possible that I just happen to pick nice numbers 
and I just happened to get a case where the result was still in W, but maybe there are other times when it's not in W. And to be a subspace, it has to be closed no matter what vectors you start with. So what that means is, is if you think that it is a subspace, and in fact this one's going to be a subspace, you can't just pick specific, pick specific numbers. You need to do a general thing and show that it's always going to work. So if I were to take any random point in W, what do we know? We know that y is 3x, and so that means my point here is x comma 3x. Similarly, if I had another point, if I had another point, then it would be the point, it would be the point, say, I don't know, z comma 3z, that would be another one that is in my set. And if I add them together, then I get x plus z, 3x plus 3z, and I have x plus z, and then 3 times x plus z, and that shows you that the y value there is exactly 3 times the x value. So, that means that this point that we get is going to be in our subset w here, and since that worked for any random points x and z in my graph of my line, that means that I am closed under vector addition. Similarly, if I take a constant and multiply it by this random vector x comma 3x, I get cx and 3cx, and again, in that case, the y value is exactly 3 times the x value, so that means you're also in W. So therefore, it's closed under vector addition. It's closed under scalar multiplication. And so that means, yes, it is a subspace. So I kind of want to just con contrast these ideas right here. If something is a subspace, you have to do a good bit more work to prove it's a subspace here. You need to actually show that it works no matter what specific points you pick. So you're going to have variables involved. However, on the other hand, if something is not a subspace, you need to show me specific numbers where it fails. So you're going to pick numbers and, and show that it doesn't work there. And it's important to understand the difference here because I could give either one or I could give both to you uh, as an assignment here. Now let's look at the next one. Now the next one, part C here, our overall vector space is R3, and we're taking the set of all points x, y, z, such that x plus y plus z is zero. And again, I'm not gonna be trying to draw this too accurately, but this is going to be a plane in three-dimensional space here, like a flat sheet of paper. And we need to decide whether or not this is a subspace. So let's suppose we take two generic points that are in my set here, W, and let's see what happens if I add them together Then I get this new vector x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2, z1 plus z2. And in order to check whether this is in W or not, we don't know yet, but the defining characteristic of being in W is that if you add the x, y, and z components, we're going to get 0. Well, then let's add the x, y, and z components here. all these things, but I can kind of rearrange by commutative property, put all the ones together and all the twos together, and we know what happens if you add up all the ones, you get zero because this first one was in W, and we know if you add the twos there, you're gonna get zero because again, that second one was in W. So therefore, we now know that this is in fact in W. And similarly, 
if we do a constant times one of these points, we get CX, CY, CZ. And if you add up the X, Y, and Z components and factor out C there, again, that works. That means that the scalar multiple is in fact still in the set W. And so therefore, once again, this is a subspace. And I'll tell you, when you're dealing with subsets of Rn defined by these equations, there's actually an easy way to tell whether or not they're going to be subspaces or not. First off, your equations have to be linear. Now, all three of the ones I gave you here are linear, but if I did something like y equal to x squared, that's going to turn out to be not a subspace. And the second thing that you need is you need it to go through the origin because you need to have the zero vector there. So notice how the first line that did not go through the origin, therefore it's not going to be a subspace. And the other two, they are going to go through the origin, and so that's why they are a subspace. So anyways, uh, that's a quick way to tell for Rn here, but what if I have something more complicated like in part D, where we have matrices here, and I said we want all the two by two matrices whose determinant is zero value, and we want to see whether or not this is a subspace. So I always like to kind of pick some examples here. The problem is on these ones, you might pick numbers that just happen to work out nicely. But here's an example where it's not going to. If you take the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, that does have a zero determinant, and it's in W. And if you take the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1, that also has a zero determinant, and is in W. But if you add them together, you get the identity matrix, which definitely does not have a determinant zero. So that means it is not in W, and so that means it is not a subspace. Again, there isn't as much uh, little tips I can give you to be able to tell on these more uh, crazy subspaces here, which ones were gonna work out well and which ones aren't. But the more you practice with it, the, the better sense you'll get ahead of time of whether it's going to be a subspace or not to know how to approach the problem.